Hi everybody, my name is Jaden. My name is Eli. I'm Jason. And I'm Caden. And we are the Yahoo and the Tor YouTube channel. And we are so glad you can join us. It is a preparation day and that means that if you are new to this channel, that means that tomorrow is a Shabbat. That means you guys, today will be your day. You cook your food, you repair your house, and you get it ready to spend the rest day with Yah. And you spend your, shatter, your Saturday, and you spend it sitting with Yah, resting with Yah. So we are going to go over the Torah today. We are, gonna, we are reading that. We are in Exodus 36. We are just went over how Moses broke the Ten Commandments out of anger because the children of Yashorel, while he was gone, they made a gold calf, they worshipped a false god after they were told not to, not too long ago, and they went and did it anyways, and it angered Moses, so now he had to roll the stones back up the hill, write them, and he's back down, and now we're building the tabernacle, the altar, we're building everything that Yah had told him to make. And he said that all with one breath. Wasn't that cool? <laughs> Thanks, Caden. We appreciate that. And yeah, thank you very, very much. Kate did a great introduction on that. And um, how are you guys doing? Good. Uh, good, good. We're actually not on preparation day. This comes out on preparation day, but... this We're, we're actually on... I think we're on, what, Wednesday? We're on, what, today's yeah, Wednesday. What day is that? Fourth day? Uh, fourth day. Yeah. Fourth day on the Creator's calendar. And so... We has our cow has not died, and so we've been haven't had to do what we thought we were going to have to do. So, she's not great, but she's not uh, dead. So we are actually rejoicing in this and trying to get her back to health and doing what we can. So hopefully we will not have heartache here. But all glory to Yahua and everything. And gentlemen, how you doing? Good, good. good. Jade, what what are you working on today? Uh, okay, today we uh we're just uh fixing up the cow coop. Make sure she's nice and soft and talking uh, to, talking to like so. flower as well. Yes, and so this is for everybody out there, our big digital family. I know pretty much what everybody did because I run the management of this team. But for everybody out there, it kind of gives you guys an insight of what we are doing, how we are doing. And all you guys out there are our big digital family, and we thank you guys so much for sitting here with us and spending this time. And we've met so many nice people and kind people that are in the comments. And a lot of a lot of single parents that are are listening to this with their their kids, and so a big shout out to all the single moms and single dads, and and those who are emboldening their children with the Torah and letting them listen in. And we are a peculiar people because we are a set apart people, and being a set apart people we, means what exactly, Eli? It means that we are righteous. We are following the Torah. And we are with Yahuwah. How would you be righteous, Eli? How how, are you, how would you be set apart? By doing what Yahoo has told us to do. How would you be set apart? By following the Torah. Okay, listen, I'm not getting this. Okay, how would you be set apart from the rest of the world? Uh, one Zitz Eats. One Zitz Eats, right. So being a peculiar people, you do not look like the world or taste like the world in any any way, you shape, or form. You see the world, the world dresses terribly, the world acts terribly. You can hear it in their speech, you hear it in the way they, they do their actions. The actions speak louder than words, and that is what we are told to do. We are told to act according to the Torah, and the Torah is just... And what we're going through right now, the first five books of the Bible, we're going through the commands, and nothing here so far has seemed too hard. Nothing here seems crazy, and there's not actually 613 commands, which is what the Jews put in there, and the 613 is just, it's a crazy, actually, it's a kind of like a numerology number that they put in there, which is actually a crazy thing that the Jewish people did back in the Kabbalah days. And so there's actually not 613, there's maybe 200, we'll get to it, we've only been up to like 50 or something like that right now. So, yeah, this is what we are doing. We are in the Torah. And being a peculiar person means you are living according to what the Torah tells you to do. Because the rest of the world is not doing what the Torah tells you to do. And that's why Yeshua came down to set us apart, right? He came to restore us. All the people were living worldly. They were living the, the life of the Kabbalah. They were living the life of the Talmud. And Yeshua says, no, that is not the right way to go. The right way to go is according to the Torah. Wow, Cade said it all in one breath again. That's awesome. Now, I'm coming back to this question that I had for Eli, but I'm asking Jade now. How are you set apart? What do you do that some stuff that you could do that the world doesn't do? Uh, we don't act like the world. We don't do as the world does. Uh, do you watch TV? No. Okay. That's what I was shooting for. Do you, oh, okay. do you listen to music? Nope. What, what music do you listen to? Uh, I the guess the Hebrew Praise and Worship we have here on the channel. Uh, there's yeah. a guy named James Block. Yep. Joseph Israel. Joseph Israel. Um, we listened to Becca Shea, but Becca Shea kind of went to the dark it's side. Also, and, Joshua Aaron, he, although he's kind of oh, yeah. Jew, he kind of implements some Jewish stuff into his videos. Josh so. wears a skull cap, but he does sing about the Messiah, so yeah, we, we do that. How else are we set apart? We don't, we you don't, guys date. Don't, 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 don't date. You don't, don't date. You've never had the, a date. We keep the Shabbat. You keep, we keep the Shabbat. What else? What other things do we, we don't eat pork. We don't eat shrimp. We don't eat clam chowder. Yeah, all those things. All those uh, delicacies in the United States, right? You have your hot dogs, you have your bacon. Those are like 
kind of like almost like branded things for Americans, right? That's the number one American brand, hot dogs. You have those. Uh, they definitely branded it the uh, the American food. I don't know. What did they call it, Nicole? Like the uh, all-American food or something? I don't remember what it is. She doesn't remember either. Hot dogs. What is it? I, I've lost my... I don't remember. Something about baseball and hot dogs. I, I, I've lost my heritage, I guess, from, from North America. But anyway, um, what else? What other stuff do you guys do that the world doesn't do? You said mention Zeet Seats. What are Zeet Seats, Kate? Zeet Seats are these little little strings. Um, they can, they're can. never really a size regulation on this, so it's just a couple blue strings and a couple uh, white strings put together, and they're knotted up together. I think there's, what is it, like 13 knots or something? I don't yeah, know what you, the tradition is towards that. We, that's tradition because that's tradition. we don't have any kind of any of that. We weren't we, told to put there there. I think it's just one knot you type because you, you have to time all together. If not, they'll be all kind of strung out. So you have to time together. Here but comes there's Nicole. There's a certain way that you do it. It's actually spelled out Jan Hey Von Hey. Yeah, but that is still tradition. It might be, but we don't know because well, well, it's I, not anywhere. We don't have any guide for it. Bible. So if you just take some blue and is it purple? Is blue, what color is it? It's blue, blue and white. Blue and white. If you take blue and white and put a couple pieces down and hang them from the four corners of your, of your, of your person. Yeah, of your person. And how do we do that? Because we don't. The Jewish people actually have like little eyelets built into their clothes. It, so the way we do it Under is uh, we have the uh, we have a belt with little loops and the uh, what is it called grommet? I think. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a webbed belt. It's I like think a, they call it. Is it a web belt? I think no. it's no, it's not it's a web like, belt. It's like a du dual hold. There's like two it's like holes, holes on each all side. up in the middle of it. And we just take. So some of these come with clips, and some just come with a loop, and we just take it and loop it inside, and like basically pull it through. So we have seat belts. So we don't leave. We don't leave home without our seat belts. And. Um, what do what does the the, the zeets represent, Eli? It tells to be like it tells people that we follow the Torah. Yeah, and it also in the end times it says that people that wear zeet seats, people will look for them. They will actually, hey, do you know Yahuwah? And you, you know, if you have zeets on, you will actually turn around. You go, absolutely. What 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 do you guys want to know? Like, you know, let's let's talk about it. All right, well that's it. Um, thank you, boys. I really appreciate that. And I know a lot of you guys. So make a noise here. Sorry, is uh, you, a lot of you listen in with us, and you know we totally invite you into our family, and, and we appreciate this. So let's let's get into the the word of Yah and see where we're at. And it looks like I need to get into the word of Yah. We are Exodus where thirty six. Thirty six. All right, <clears throat> Exodus thirty six. Now we're going to do the little um, handy dandy uh, split screen thing, and we're going to go right here. And I have my little apprentice Eli, and he is running the top while I run the bottom. Okay, so Exodus 36. Then wrought Betsael and Aholiah of, and every wise hearted man in whom Yahuwah put wisdom and understanding to know how to work all manner of work for the service of the sanctuary according to all that Yahuwah had commanded. And Moshe called Betsael and Aholiah of, and every wise hearted man in whose heart Yahuwah had put wisdom, even everyone whose heart stirred him up to come unto the work to do it. And they received of Moshe all of the offering which the children of Yashrael had brought for the work of the service of the sanctuary to make it withal. And they brought yet unto him free offerings every morning. Okay, now what were these? What were these guys doing, guys? Uh, Bethiel and Olihav or Bethiel, they were the makers of the tabernacle and the maker, the gold workers and the people that would basically build. They were the architects. Like, they were like, like he's the man. They, they were like construction workers, and Yah had for some reason chosen them. Is probably are they construction workers or they were the architects? They or they, were they both? both? They're pretty both. much both. Well, Yah is kind of the uh, architect because he kind of put throughout the layout of it. But these guys kind of had to figure out how it all went together. Right? They had to put it together, and I assume they had previous work in this from Egypt. If they had the knowledge and the understanding to do it, because. That's just kind of a hard thing to understand how to build things unless, like, Yahuwah, like, super gave them all the knowledge to. I think he put it on their hearts to do it. Like they said, I will volunteer for it. So. Right. And so they're letting a whole bunch of volunteers do a whole bunch of cool stuff right now. Okay. And all the wise men that wrought all the work of the sanctuary came every man from his work, which they made. And they spoke unto Moshe, saying, The people bring much more than enough for the service of the work, which Yahuwah commanded to make. And Moshe gave commandment. And they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp, saying, Let neither man nor woman make any more work for the offering of the sanctuary, so that people were restrained from bringing. So that, what does that tell you guys? It just means they, everyone wanted to bring so much. Everyone, after they had messed up this whole thing, they were like, they were all bringing, they were all bringing gold, they were, they were all they were, bringing everything they had yes. to contribute to it. And it became to the point where he's like, we have so many piles of gold, we have so much wood. He goes, there's too much for this building we're creating. What do we do with all of it? And Moses is like, all right, 
We'll just stop what we have. We'll see what we That's have. That's amazing. Stop bringing it. It's like uh, when Solomon b- built the temple a second time when in Yashara after he was given the Start instruction. Start slaughtering like And he's like, men. and people were bringing bulls. They were so excited to, uh, <laughs> they were so excited to like have feast with Yahoo and bring him back into the land that he's like, stop. There's too many animals. Just stop. It's like, thousands we, he's of like, thousands we'll, of we'll bulls. never finish. We'll never finish. We'll never end off the killing. Yeah. Thing. So, I mean, there are a lot of people on fire for Yah. And I know there's a lot of you guys out there who are, on fire for Yahoo as well. And, you know, that's exciting. These are exciting times that we're coming into um, because, I mean, they're, the remnant or whoever it is that are saved, there's not a tremendous amount of them. So um, <laughs> I've come to the conclusion that for the majority of the people, I think everybody's poor. I think the people of Yah have been blessed with being, like, poor. But I know there's some people out there that have it. But So, you know, if you are, are have wealth, be be thankful. Be a, extremely thankful uh, to Yah because he gives and he can completely take away in a heartbeat. All right, seven. For the stuff they had was sufficient for all the work to make it and too much. And every wise-hearted man among them that wrought the work of the tabernacle made ten curtains of fine twined linen and blue and purple and scarlet and care of them of cunning work made he them. So here we go again with these colors, right? These are all the same colors that Yah loves, like lots of these Blues and purples and scarlets. I guess is this scarlet's kind of a red. Yeah, it's kind so of. It's like, it's like yeah, it's like but a. It's kind of like a purple, right? It's like a light purple. I think it's more of a. It's like a, a brown, right? It's like a shiny red. Uh, we're, we're discussing like this because I'm colorblind. And I can never get colors right. So, um, <laughs> the boys will tell me like a, some green lawnmower, and I'm like, that is absolutely not green. That was orange. Like, it was red and orange. Orange, right? It, it, whatever they're saying, it did not look like that at all. So, colorblind is is interesting life. Okay, the length of one curtain was twenty and eight cubits, and the breadth of one curtain four cubits. The curtains were all of one size. And he coupled the five curtains one unto another, and the other five curtains he coupled one unto another. And he made loops of blue on the edge of the one curtain from the selvage of in the coupling. Likewise, he made in the uttermost side of another curtain in the coupling of the second. Now, it says loops in this one. What does yours say, Kate? Because the last one, it just said it had a funky word instead of loops and hoops. Mine says loops. It just says loops. Huh. All right. Oh, well, the other ones had a, a funky one in this Yeah, version. it was like, uh, I don't remember, super... Tatches? It might have been tatches. Or, yeah, tatches. tatches T-A-C-H-E-S, yeah. tatches. Yep. 50 loops made he in one curtain. There's that number again, 50. Things in sevens and fifties. 50 loops he made he in one curtain, and 50 loops made he in the edge of the curtain, which was in the coupling of the second. The loops held one curtain to another. And he made 50 tatches, there's that word, 50 tatches of gold, what'd you say? He Oaks. made... Where are you at, Jones? 13. Yeah. 13. Yes. Yeah. Pigeon. Yeah, it says hooks. Pigeon, it says hooks. <laughs> up here, up here in the NIV, it says clasps. Okay, so clasps. Okay, so it's different than the hoops. So the hoops. So uh, tatches, tatches is hooks, not. Yeah. So these are hoops. different. So he made fifty tatches of gold and coupled the curtains. Okay, yeah. So these are the hooks, I think, that go inside of the hoops. <laughs> so tatches of gold and coupled the curtains one unto another with the tatches. So it became one tabernacle. And he made curtains of goat's hair for the tent over the tabernacle. Eleven curtains made, curtains he made them. Now, why eleven? I don't know. Why not twelve? Um, I'll probably just leave. I didn't get inheritance because they were. Uh, uh, that could be because they are the priests. Yeah, they are the priests. Yeah. They were the curtain. <laughs> we don't. Well, I don't know if that's true, but I mean that's. That could be something. Could be something. It's a theory. Yep. Um, the length of one curtain was 30 cubits, and the four cubits was the breadth of one curtain. The 11 curtains were of one size. And he coupled the five curtains by themselves and six curtains by themselves. And he made 50 loops upon the uttermost edge of the curtain in the coupling. And 50 loops made he upon the edge of the curtain, which couples the second. And he made 50 tatches of brass to couple the tent together that it might be one. And he made a covering for the, rams, for the tent of ram's skins dyed red. And a covering of antelope skins above that. So I wonder when where they got the antelope. antelope. Mine says ram. Ram? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's like wondering where they got the antelope at it. You know, an antelope is not something. They're pretty they're, fast. They're bou- they bounce like deer. And so they, they, have you guys ever seen deer? Yeah, I've, seen, I've, seen, I've seen, I think we've seen a video once of antelope. Yeah. Never so, seen a physical antelope. Yes. No, I, I shot one when I was a child. <laughs> yeah, that was, I guess, my claim to fame. I killed an antelope. Um, <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, great. Um, <laughs> and he made a covering for the tent. So let's read this one again. And he made a covering for the tent of rams skin dyed red and a covering of, you guys have rams? Mm-hmm. What was your fir- what's the first word? Ram skins? Mm-hmm. Ram skins. And then the other sets, ram skins? Yeah. Why would it say two ram skins? And a covering of ram skins above that? Why would you just say, well, wouldn't it say the covering for the tent of rams skins? Tent and the covering. This one is really weird. It says of dolphin. Dolphins. 
Porp- no. Porp- porpoise skins. Wow. There Those you go. are like fish. Yeah. So hey, they, oh uh, no way. These translations know. just cannot get yeah. this. A yeah, dolphin? I, I think, Where they get it is like Moe's out harpooning a dolphin. Dude, they're out, out by the ocean, dude. They completely go out there. They can figure this I out. I don't think they took a dolphin skin. I don't. That was never commanded of them to go grab a dolphin. I mean, it's like an unclean animal. Is it? A dolphin's not clean to eat. It doesn't have scales, does No, it? it's just a giant. I think, but rams, I think, clean to eat, so. Rams, so he's probably. I'm pretty sure he's not going to have antelope, any. though, is antelope. I think an antelope chews a cut. It has hoof foot. I think it's clean, yeah. I think it's, it's like clean. a deer. Hoofed feet. Not foot. Yeah, I've never eaten antelopes. <laughs> I uh, yeah, we're, we're down south here. I've lost Split my hoof. English language. I'm pretty sure Split they didn't hoof. use a dolphin on it. Yes, I, yeah, it's probably not a dolphin, but let's uh, let's go on that. When that was in what? That was in the Amplified. Amplified, okay. I'm looking at Septuagint real quick. Oh, right. went out fishing, I guess. Hey, yeah, somebody had to fish. That's a big That's a big thing, though. Six, right? Dolphins are yeah, big. Would there be a dolphin in a river? Would there be more like an ocean? No, no, you wouldn't find one in a river. You'd find it in an ocean. It's an ocean animal. I mean, how close were they to the ocean? I don't think they were that I think close. they were pretty close. I think Israel's right on the edge. There's oceans or a giant sea or something. I think there would be dolphins somewhere around there. I mean, they're right on coast. Yeah, yeah, but I'm pretty sure they weren't fishing for dolphins. That was not their objective. How do you know? It never once was committed. I mean, I don't think y'all's going to go, all right, go uh, take a pig, I cut it up, and use them for the door. I can't remember hearing a dolphin before in the Torah. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. No. I, I mean, it's, it's an unclean animal. He's not going to have his tabernacle made of an unclean animal. He's eating dolphins. He's yeah, that's, not, tr- that's true. He's not yeah, gonna go, I'll go with that. He's, like, he's not going to go, all right, take the pig's tail and use it for <laughs> use it for some twine. Yeah. He's not uh, going to take the pig's Take this, the height of the skin. This, all right, take this unclean yeah, dolphin you. and you're going to use okay. it for my door. That's a very good point. Very good point. Yeah. And, okay, let's go. Let's continue on. Uh, definitely, it's probably more like ram skin again. Uh, maybe antelope skin. Maybe. Because if, if it's antelope skin... Unless they dye it, and see, and the like, antelope skin is going to be like um, two different colors. It's going to be like a, a beige and a white or something. Up top of the KGV says badger skins. Oh my goodness! Now badgers. I don't think badgers are clinging. Animals. No way. No, they have become millions of badgers to get those. Badgers. Small. But that still, y'all would have unclean animals on yeah. this temple. <laughs> well, it can't be what badgers. Is, what's it has to be so hard about the why? why I wonder. Is, I wonder what the original Hebrew word is. It, why it's so confusing for everyone. It, it must be completely. It, you got confusing. dolphins it's and probably, badgers and it's antelopes. It's probably mammal skin. Yeah, oh. antelope skin would be a cool looking design, and it would be like deer skin. It would be like it could be like a lot skin. of languages where one word could be a whole bunch of animals. It could be, yeah. I don't know. I would say probably ram skins. I guess we shouldn't ever duplicate this unless we ever get the uh, direct order from Yah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I wouldn't. I would attempt this one. You might All right. actually end up with a dolphin. Do okay. Not, do let's, not attempt at home. Yeah, do not attempt at home. All right, let's continue on, guys. Um, Twenty. <clears throat> And, and again, it, people yell at us for being silly. We don't mean to be silly. These are just some interesting things. I, you know, if we can't laugh, I mean, what, what, what good is life? <clears throat> All right, twenty. And he made the boards for the tabernacle of Chittim wood standing up. The length of the board was ten cubits, and the breadth of a board one cubit and a half. One board had two tenons equally distant one from another. Thus did he make for all the boards of the tabernacle. And he made the boards for the tabernacle twenty boards for the south side southward. And 40 sockets of silver he made under the 20 boards. Two sockets under one board for his two tenons, and two sockets under one board for his two tenons. What did you guys say? Did you guys say sockets? Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. What, uh, this one says projection. Under each projection. Well, that's for tenons. 24, right? Yeah. Uh, two bases. Bases are what you're looking at right there. Eli's looking from the side trying to read this because he's my side dude. Okay. Um, yeah, 25, right? Yep. And for the other side of the tabernacle, which is toward the north corner, he made 20 boards. And there are 40 sockets of silver, two sockets under one board, and two sockets under another board. And for the sides of the tabernacle westward, he made six boards. And two boards made he for the corners of the tabernacle in the two sides. And they were coupled beneath and coupled together at the head thereof to one ring. Thus he did to both of them in both the corners. It would be amazing to have a video watching this come together, just like... Exactly what we're reading here because I have no idea, honestly. And there were eight boards, and their sockets were 16 sockets of silver under every board, two sockets. And he made bars of chittim wood, five for the boards of the one side of the tabernacle. So I'm guessing these are like some kind of walls or something. The walls inside of this, anyone? Anyone have an idea? Mm, I don't know. I don't know. This is kind of this is where it gets complex. The boards near the floor. They could be the walls. Eight boards and the silver sockets. I think it's because of the sockets. I think this is still a wall to put all the curtains in. 
Huh. And he made bars of Chittim wood, five for the boards of the one side of the tabernacle, and five bars, bars for the boards of the other side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the boards of the tabernacle for the sides westward. Try saying that five times. That fast. was really hard. <laughs> it's like boards, bars. Bars, bars, bars. <laughs> okay, and he made the middle bar to shoot through the boards from one end to the other, and he overlaid the boards with gold. Those boards got heavy, and made the rings of gold to be places for the bars, and overlaid the bars with gold. So this is a lot like the ark is what I envision the ark or like the, 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 the sacrifice table, right? Mm -hmm. I think they made it of wood and then they like put gold over it because you don't have to have something you can't burn, right? If you just have any wood exposed on any of the stuff, it's Does just gold burn though. No, you'd, it'd be no, super really, hot, really hot temperature. super, super hot. It's like a really, yeah, they, they've mastered it. Aaron had a mastered making the molten calf. <laughs> that was, Dude, that was, was, that, was, was that was really He was hot. the works of the gold. He should have been put at the temple after that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody ever said the calf looked good. It looked like a, a badger or something. I mean, it probably didn't even look like a goat. The golden dolphin. Yeah, the goat. It was the calf. <laughs> the golden badger. Okay. And he made a veil of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twined linen with cherubim made he it of cunning work. And he made thereunto four pillars of chittim wood and overlaid them with gold. Their hooks were of gold, and he cast for them four sockets of silver. And he made a hanging for the tabernacle door of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twined linen of needlework. All right, guys, what is Yah's favorite colors? Scarlet, purple, and blue. Blue, purple, scarlet. I mean, that's Yah's favorite colors of all times, which is crazy. How much of that is in the, in the rainbow? Just one, right? Blue? Uh, blue well, purple, there's purple and purple. red. Oh, there's purple in the rainbows? And there's red. And scarlet is red? It's it's reddish. Oh, it's like a color of red. It's like a sh like kind of red. I don't know. Shiny hmm. All right. And the pillars of it, 38, and the pillars of it with their hooks, and, and he overlaid their chapiters and their fillets with gold, but their five sockets were of brass. Did you guys say fillets? Uh, my, okay. It's, and his five columns with their hooks, he overlaid their tops and their rings with gold, but their five sockets were bronze. Okay. That... Overlaid the tops of the posts and their bands with gold. Wow. It is so hard to get a good translation. Okay, and we don't honestly know what it, it says. But that's why we got a several different translations. Try yes. to put the best of it together. Yes, and it, you know, it, as long as it, people often scold me when I tell people to read the NIV for easy reading because they're like, ah, it's a terrible translation. And it absolutely is, but they all are, right? And so as long as you know the name of our Messiah, which is what, Eli? Yahoshua or Yeshua. Or How would you Yahushua. spell that? Um, Y-E-S-H-U-A or Y A. H-U-S-H-U-A. Yeah, Yahushua, like Joshua with a, with a Y. All right, everybody, so let's, we are, hit, 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 hit. I just want to say one thing, like, uh, in life, when we're at the beginning of this, and we see Betzael and Olihab, where they had uh, jobs, they knew how to do these jobs, right? It was put on their hearts. Uh, Yah might give you something in life that gives you a skill to prepare you for the kingdom, and I think you should take that skill as something, as a blessing from Yah. He's trying to get you to where it is, where you need to be, because you want to, you may end up having some gold work if that's what Yah has you put into. You gotta, you gotta listen to what Yah's plans are for you, because he's going to, everything prepares you for the kingdom, whether it is you are a gold worker or whether it is you are something else, he may have you build his temple one day. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point. I mean, it, and, you know, I could tell you that is our creator has preserved not not this family for a time such as this, but just of the stuff we are doing extracurricular wise. Everybody has a plan. Everybody has a purpose. And right now, with the amount of souls that are being stolen by Hasatan across this world, we need to be a light in this darkness. We need to be a candle where there is really just tremendous darkness. If you, if you look at the world overall, it is a very dark place. It is turned into a very, very dark place with very bad intent for everybody. And if you are a child of the Most High, we would hope that you guys are smart enough not to be deceived by the great deception that came and it went. And... Um, you know, it, this is this is what it is. It's about being strong. It's about bringing all of this stuff to the kingdom to come. And we don't know where this is going to be. We don't know what kind of exodus we're going to have. We don't we don't know if we're going to end up being martyrs for the for Yah, which is something we could very well do. So we all have to be prepared for all of that. And and yeah, we will be. You know, He created all of us, and we have special skills for all of this. Now let's do touch on something real quick before we go. It is Shabbat for everybody, and it's it's not going to be Shabbat for us, but it will be very soon anyway. And so, what do we do on Shabbat? Nicole, tell us a little bit about preparation day on Shabbat. How do you how do you take care of this family? Um, I prepare all the meals so that everybody has food to eat 
Honestly, what does that what does that mean prepare the meals how does this go down it depends on what i make but if i'm doing like say potatoes or something i cut up all the potatoes i pre-cook them in the oven and then i put them in the crock pot so that we have them for the next day or i make muffins for breakfast and, and the potatoes we just simply we will bake the day before make sure they're all like cooked so it doesn't take forever in the crock pot um, and so muffins are super simple and we do that the day before like on, on preparation day um, what else? Um, I clean the house, make sure everything is swept so there's no dirt on the floor that I'm staring at driving me crazy all on Shabbat. Yeah, we fill up all, <laughs> we fill up all our waters. We make sure all of our tanks are full. We, we have, uh, we cut an extra set of grass for all of our cows. And, and sometimes when we keep all of our cows in, there's a lot of grass. And so it's, it's a lot of work to prepare for that day. So, um, but what are some of the benefits? What are some of the blessings, Jade, that you will, that people will receive? What, what should they, what should they expect to, you know, if they've just starting to keep Shabbat, what would they start to expect? Well, they should expect rest and recharge. They should be expecting blessings. Their lives should be more fulfilled. They should have that one day off that you told them to do, and they'll be blessed for following that day. Yeah, what do you think, Jade? Uh, you definitely feel more replenished if that's, that's something people need in their lives. You cannot work a full seven out seven days a week for eight hours a day without feeling completely drained. You always need that one day to rest. You need that one day to recharge. And there's 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 lots of blessings that come with it. There's lots of peace that comes with it. Your mind resets when you are just when you are not focused on the world. When you are focused on Yah. When you are focused on the Word and what is in it. You're not focused on the world. You are resetting your mind. You're resetting your soul on this whole thing. Giving yourself more peace than what you had the week before. Yeah, it, we put away everything that we have. You know, we uh, run a little truth website called 153news.net. And again, it is not for children. It's not, it's again, it's a, pl it's a place for truth. And truth is actually a very dirty, horrible, evil thing. But we put, we, you will not get a hold of us there. You will not get a hold of us on anything like that. Um, everything we have, we try to put away from us. Um, we don't care what's happening in the world. We don't care, you know, anything that is going on. And, um, we try to make it as peaceful as possible. And when you first start, it's kind of difficult to just take a whole day and rest because if you're not used to resting a whole day, you're like, I should be working, I should be doing something. So it, it takes some time to ease into it to where you enjoy that rest. Like you're like, I can't wait for it to be here so that I can have that rest. Yeah, and it, it was very difficult. The first few times I started keeping Shabbat, um, by the time five and six o'clock rolled around the next day, I was just like, man, this day is never, ever going to end. And then you start taking the rest and you take in, you, you start getting that it is a full true day of rest from sunset Friday night to sunset Saturday night. It is the day of rest. And there are no other days that are, are blessed. And here is, you know, we'll touch on one thing that I believe the correct calendar is probably at TorahCalendar.com. Here is the problem when you guys keep lunar Shabbats and keep all of these other Shabbats is if you are not keeping the seven day cycle and the 50 year the Jubilees, then you're keeping this wrong. You cannot have say a middle of the year start two days after a Shabbat because you do not have a seven day cycle. Our creator is, is smart enough and intelligent enough and has engineered time and all this stuff to where he has cycles of seven. And if you are not in the cycle of seven and you're keeping a Shabbat say on a Tuesday or a Wednesday, and then you go another year and you keep it on a, a Wednesday or Thursday, you're getting out of the cycle. It, it should not restart. And if you are restarting, then all of your days are going to be wrong. Your jubilees are going to be wrong. Your um, feast of Pesach is going to be wrong. Everything is going to be wrong. So um, I've come to the conclusion, even though we are complete flat earthers, I do not believe that we're on a spinning ball like a bunch of monkeys flying through space at enormous miles per hour. Um, Torah Calendar is, TorahCalendar.com is the go off, you know, what they see in the sky. But I believe there is enough... Uh, deceit and deception that you know it, you we don't the, the stars wander right the stars and we can see all of this stuff and that's what they talk about and all they are tricked on is that we're revolving in a circle and i i believe that we are foundation we have four winds coming from all four corners of the of the world and there's there's nowhere it ever says we're wobbling or spinning or any of this kind of crazy stuff uh, in fact, it says our creator says it's a footstool above him. And if he, we're going a thousand miles an hour, that's a terrible footstool. It's just going to knock you to the ground. So gentlemen, do you guys have anything else on Shabbat that you guys can help these guys out with? Anybody out there? 
Um, enjoy the day. Try to just re rest. Take away all the world. Let it go. And just focus on y'all. Let all your worries go away that day. Yeah. And James Block has, I mean, if there is somebody who's probably going to be singing in um, Yaw's choir at some point, or at least a musician or something, he may not be singing, but he does have, um, you know, he, he, James, is, he, you can tell he's a loved soul by Yaw and look up his music. It, you know, you can put it on, um, uh, you know, whatever mix and just listen to his stuff. It's real slow. It's real quiet. It's real biblical. He's, he completely goes through, you know, all, all sorts of stuff. And it's, it's great music for Shabbat as well. All right, guys, let's wrap this up. We've gone long enough on this. Um, everybody's probably tired if you're still with us. Uh, much love to everybody out there, our digital family. Huge hugs and um, high fives. And, you know, one day we will all give each other physical high fives, big hugs. Anything else, gentlemen? Read your Bibles, get some rest. Shabbat shalom. All right, shabbat shalom, everyone. Shalom. Bye.